Good evening, everyone. Joe for jazbeeshobbyland.com. Settle in, get comfortable, get comfy, because we're going to do 2018 Bowman Baseball 12 box. Pick your team number four. Do, 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 do. Need some fanfare there. All right, so there's everyone right here. Saturday night. Bowman Baseball, all 12 boxes, Hobby Edition. Congrats to George Patterson. He filled up, or pretty much filled up, that Angels spot random a little while ago. And he got himself the Angels, thankfully. <laughs> Jeremy Merle knocking out that last spot mojo with my Dodgers, little Dodger Joe mojo tonight. There's everybody else. We actually have a good crew on a Saturday night watching with us. So thanks for hanging out. Thanks for watching. Thanks for helping fill up this break. We were saying, we were just chatting off camera, how I was saying, you know, a lot of people, a lot, most people, I like baseball, so big baseball guy. I subscribe to Baseball America and all that, so I actually enjoyed doing these breaks. But they are kind of boring for for the casual watcher, for the casual viewer. But I was I was saying that you know what? Of all the, uh, oh, it's just a series two poster. Of all the other case breakers that are out there, we probably have the least boring of these Bowman baseball breaks. I'm pretty confident of that. We always go off on weird tangents, and or we discuss baseball, but sometimes we go off on weird tangents. Um, so I think we're the most, we're the least boring. And Josh Exline pipes in with Jaspies, home of the least boring breaks. Yeah, I like that. When it comes to breaks that are like an hour plus, I say we are the least boring. Now, I'm not suggesting, ladies and gentlemen, if you're watching at home, if you're watching the replay, I'm not suggesting you should actually watch these hour and a half long videos, unless you're in the break. There's really really no point in doing that. In fact, if you miss the break, you can just fast forward through it. Just click uh, L, I think, on your computer, and it'll fast forward like 10 or 15 seconds at a time. Or you can watch on like double speed. I'm pretty sure you can watch on double speed and just hear my chipmunk voice. And then just, we can rock through the video that way. You won't miss anything, trust me. All right, so pack, box one, one autograph per box, a lot of parallels, our Otani autograph count, two. And that was like dozens and dozens of boxes ago, many cases ago. We found two in the same GD case. And we haven't seen one since. That was like a month ago, I think. It had to be like a month ago. So the hunt continues. Now, baseball-wise, Bill Mosher, who has the who has a couple teams in this break, he was saying he's saying that speaking of baseball injuries are mounting. Speaking of Otani concerns, folks. I don't know what the latest is, but I think as of yesterday, and, and a lot of LA sports talk radio, the local guys anyway, are freaking out. They're just like, "Oh, Otani, what's going on? What happens? What do we do? What what happens to him? What happens if he's out for the season?" And then there was some some sort of conspiracies about like oh you know what if uh, you know remember how that how there was a grade one sprain of his UCL that that information which I think is kind of illegal leaking medical medical information but without that person's consent but there was after he signed with the Angels there was reports that he had a a grade one UCL uh, sprain. People were a little worried about that, but I think most baseball guys weren't that concerned because they're like, "Hey," um, because uh, they're like, "Hey, I'll bet a lot of guys if you MRI'd everyone's elbows, every pitch, starting pitcher's elbows, that they're gonna have some sort of strain there, some sort of sprain or strain or, or tear." You know, so it's not something to worry about too much. Masahiro Tanaka, I think, has been pitching with a with a grade one tear or something like that for his entire career. You know, that's been disclosed and he hasn't gotten surgery. He's just rehabbed it and he's been fine. A lot of people saying that uh, the fact that he throws a split finger, I can't even split my fingers to a split finger. That split finger, if you split your fingers, that tendon stretches out all the way to your elbow where the, where the UCL is. I forget on what side it is, but it'll stretch out. And throwing the split finger fastball can have a strain on that ligament in your elbow. And it turns out that Otani has been, turns out that Otani throws that pitch pretty frequently. Colton Welker, 
purple parallel matching the team goes to Brad. Brad, on the board. Brad F on the board. That's it, Brad. You're dismissed from this hour and a half break. You got, you got your hit. 64 out of 250. There could be more. So um, anyhow, they're saying that that additional strain from the split fingers could have contributed. That's the speculation from pitchers anyway. Could have contributed to to this grade two sprain. Now strain, tear, I, for, I don't forget what they call it. but So we'll see what happens. I think, uh, I think he's on the DL for a few weeks. Or he's on the, he's officially on the, on the, uh, on the 10 day DL, but, but he should be out for a few weeks is what people are saying. There's Pete Alonzo, 49 out of 200. Just in the interest of time, we're just going to leave those there and they'll get top loaded before they ship out. Why is this turned around? Like, no, nothing special. Yeah, Brad's like, peace out guys, satisfied already. Yeah, done and done. You're dismissed. You're free to leave. Feel free to stay. Free to leave, though. All right, so as many of you know, the paper base, except for Otani's, don't ship. This stuff, you know, the Atomics obviously will ship. All the chrome will be sorted out and shipped. All the inserts, of course, too, and all the paper inserts will ship, too. So that's the uh, that's the thing with that's the latest on Shohei Otani. Now, in terms of what we do, right? People are like, well, how does that affect his value? And there was some casual discussion about how how it affects his value. What does everyone think? I mean, how much does that affect the value? There's Nick Senzel, twenty one to twenty five. That's a nice uh, Bowman Scouts top one hundred for the Reds EA on the board. I think the big concern is. Not necessarily that oh he's gonna he's gonna suck, you know. To put it bluntly, I think the concern is well he's just it, it's kind of like an out of sight, out of mind sort of thing. If he's out of sight, you know, then the value naturally goes down. Less hype, less time to see him, less things, less time opportunities for him to do great things. So it would be a shame if he was shut down for the season because I feel like it was such a great season thus far I don't think he was going to do home run derby but it would at least been cool to see him do like some all-star at least just show up there and hang out at the all-star game there's Gliber Torres out of 125 what's up big boys 007 uh, not much we literally just started this break and our first autograph was Colton Welker this is box 1 of 12 and pick your team 4 We're still waiting on the Red Sox to sell out, and I think fi then Finest would be the the last break of the night if that sells out. If not, that might get pushed to pushed to next uh, week. I'm sure it'll sell out by then. There he is. Speak of the devil. It's Jaron Kendall, Bowman Sterling insert that will ship. Drafted last year by my Dodgers. space for all the paper that's going to accumulate here. I think these still sell for like five, five to eight dollars I feel like. All right so there's our first auto right there. Nice Colton Welker and the next box. Good luck. Box two. For my Dodgers, man, the injuries have been mounting. The um, the Dodgers have a pitching rotation's worth of injuries, as I've been saying throughout the week. Clayton Kershaw, DL, that back, very big concern. You know, think about all the all the other great athletes who've had back issues. Tony Romo, Tiger Woods, Larry Bird. Um, those back issues are scary. Uh, Don Mattingly.
they got Kershaw on the DL, Rich Hill on the DL, Kenta Maeda on the DL, Hyunjin Ryu on the DL. Um, so there's a <laughs> that's four four starters, right? There four four two great starters, two solid starters in Ryu and Maeda. I mean, uh, actually Hyunjin Ryu was the best pitcher on the Dodgers rotation when he went down. So. Dodgers are trying to trying to win with a patchwork rotation. Uh, Bill Mosher asking, are the Bowman Chrome non-autos worth anything? They can be. Yeah, as TJ is saying, they can be. Uh, I think it's yeah, as TJ is saying, especially the Bowman firsts. Oh, they have first in the corner. We'll, I'm sure we'll see one. Like those, those can those can go up if you hold on to those. Because there, they'll be they'll, they could be a guy that pops out of nowhere where you're like, oh, oh dang, you know. That's like kind of put it put it in the uh, put it in the drawer and forget it kind of thing, you know. And then you might look in the drawer a few years later and be like, oh, there's Reese Hoskins. Kind of what happened last summer. Always, always some guy that comes out of nowhere and then is like the guy to chase in the hobby. Yeah, the the trading deadline for pitchers is going to be crazy this year. I think. I don't know if the I don't know if my Dodgers are going to be in play for any pitchers, um, unless it's like Chris Archer or something like that. But he, Chris Archer's on such a club friendly deal. That, and the Dodgers aren't going to be willing to move a lot of their big prospects. I just think that that'll happen. They're not going to get any high price guy. I think they're trying trying to stay under the luxury tax. There's AJ Puck for the A's. Nice atomic for TJ. Yeah, the Aaron Judge story always always cracks me up, TJ, because you never know who's going to come out of this. Look at Aaron Judge. It is kind of funny. There's the first right there. Um, because uh, remember at the end of 2016, TJ, in the off season after Aaron Judge had a bad month, you know, after he came up for a cup of coffee, everyone's like, oh, trade Aaron Judge. You know, like, trade him, get rid of him, just DFA him. Awful. We don't need him taking taking up a roster spot. Throw away his cards. Forget his autographs. There's Franklin Colomb out of 50. That's gold paper. And then just rakes in 2017. That is true, TJ. We are stacked. Dodgers are stacked in pitching. Nice gold shimmer. Gold, uh, Jordan Humphreys for the Mets, 22 out of 50. I mean, Dennis Santana, Walker Bueller. Julio Urias could be starting some rehab starts soon. Making some rehab starts soon in two or three weeks. So thankfully the Dodgers have, have managed to, and their offense is starting to come, has come alive a little bit. So I think thankfully they've been able to keep their heads above 500 in a week NL West. I feel like, the, I feel like 85 games could win the NL West this year. Yeah, so what... what what do the Red Sox need to do, if anything? Nice Daniel Johnson. Atomic autograph for John Goss and the Nationals. I mean, I guess the Red Sox are pretty set, but I'm fig figuring both the Yankees and the Red Sox are going to have to do something, right, to get that edge against each other. Nice one, John. That's out of 100. The College World Series, or not College World, College Baseball Playoffs, maybe? On the television right now. Um, Kemp has been, Bill Mosher asking about Matt Kemp. Kemp has turned back the clock. It's been kind of surprising how, you know, he's like he's a vet now. <laughs> no worries, John. You're welcome. Thanks for getting the, uh, the Nationals. He, he's, like a, he's like an old vet. 
he's he's taking the young guys under their wing, you know. Yeah, this is just box two, X line. It's gonna take it's it's gonna take about it's about ten minutes a box, I think. So that's about a little under ten minutes a box, so about an hour and a half. A little under ten minutes a box. But yeah, Matt Kemp has definitely turned back the clock. He lost a lot of weight, and I think, uh, I think it's, uh, I think the Dodgers front office really puts him in the, in a position to succeed, right? So, what's the what's one of the biggest knocks on Matt Kemp? Um, defense. You know, his, he's not as fast as he used to be, which covered up his sort of bad positioning and all that sort of stuff. But guess what? With all the advanced metrics that everyone has, you get the little they have those little like like those blackjack helper cards you get like a little defensive position card and that has helped him big time dodgers have a lot of depth so they can pull him out of the game maybe a few innings early keep him keep him well rested i think losing a lot of weight for matt kent was huge so less strain on his sort of he's got a degenerative hip thing i think that's helped him a lot and i think he's having fun i think he never i, I think he never wanted to get traded from the dodgers I think he was bummed to be in San Diego. Didn't like getting moved again all the way to uh, all the way to Atlanta. You know, I think he gained a little weight, maybe lost a little focus. He hit well. But I think he's definitely re-energized being in LA, so he's back. So Red Sox need middle relief desperately, huh? So that's that's their that's their thing. Uh, TJ saying totally surprised if the Dodgers had. Oh, if we still had Verdugo at the end of the deadline. I feel like, yeah, Verdugo is the odd man out, right? Because, because um, you know, he can't crack the outfield. There's Kemp there. There's Puig still there. Jock Peterson's actually hitting well, you know. So and they've got a lot of depth in the outfield. So, so I mean, but he's a good hitter. He's, a, he's, he's supposed to be a good prospect. So I think you're right, TJ. He, he'll probably be moved. And maybe one of the catchers, right? Kybert Ruiz or Will Smith. I could see that. So I think the Dodgers can still can still get there to the playoffs. What do you think, Arthur? NL West? Oh, Goldie with another multi home run game? I'm glad I traded him in fantasy this time. And um What do you think, Arthur? Like like eighty seven games could win the NL West? I feel like like 87 wins can win the a NL West. The Rockies are in the mix. The Dodgers are catching up, and the Diamondbacks have been leading. But I feel like I feel like that's what uh, that's what's that's what's going to happen. Yasiel Puig is behaving himself, Bill. I think the narrative has changed ha has changed considerably in the last uh, five years. You know, last three years even. I think getting, I think maybe getting demoted to Oklahoma City, I think, for a month or so. Kind of put him back in check. I think he's got kids now. So I think that's really kind of slowed, down, slowed him down a little bit. So he's, he's back. He's, he's been doing well. Cedric Mullins. EA Sports with the Cedric Mullins autograph. So yeah, so there's, I mean, he's, he, he was young, young and rich. <laughs> so young, rich, new country, you know, like, so I think he was just kind of, kind of going a little, a little wild, but I think after he's, after he kind of got, sowed his wild oats, I guess, <laughs> got, got it out of his system and got settling down kids this and that so I think that uh I think that has really put a good attitude on his on his face and realizing that if he didn't shape up if he didn't take it seriously he'd be out of the game and no one would take him and the AL East is quite different from the NL West Oh, that the Dodgers are winning because they're not. All we gotta do is face the Diamondbacks in the playoffs, though, Arthur. We take care of you in the playoffs. We just can't beat you in the regular season. 
I guess we have to get to the playoffs first this year. There's Brandon McKay to 499. That goes to the Rays. Luke Smith. When it counts, though, Arthur, in the, like in the playoffs, we'll take care of the Diamondbacks. Just that regular season. I don't know why we can't beat you guys in the regular season. I think uh, if we if, if all the teams play the car the Reds all season. Oh no, the Dodgers, the Dodgers got uh the Dodgers actually got swept by the Reds. Oh man, those were dark times. That was like a month ago. Dark times. When the Reds went on that like six or seven game winning spurt. The old stuff, that was just last fall, Arthur. Just last fall. Spencer Howard for the Phillies. I feel like the, the Cardinals X line are always uh, are always kind of underrated. Right? I think they made some good moves. What do the Cardinals need to do? That's a tough division. I feel like the Pirates are kind of tailing off a little bit, but Cubs are back in back in the mix at a four ninety nine. Cubs are back in the mix. Brewers are playing extremely well, and the Cardinals are right in the mix too. I think they quietly made some good moves. I like I like uh, Harrison Bader. I like him. Jack Flaherty. Right, Mikolas is okay. Michael Waka, I think, took a no-hitter to the, what, eighth or ninth inning the other night. Carlos Martinez. Poor Alex Reyes, but still, you got some guys. Um, Ozuna, right? You guys, you guys picked up Marcel Ozuna. What's the... Uh, What's the what's the big need for the Cubs to kind of or Cubs for the Cardinals to get over that hump? Like trading deadline, I guess I guess that's the question I'm kind of getting to. For all of your teams, folks, what's the what's the trading deadline move? Arthur, I heard something crazy. Where that the Diamondbacks could be in on Manny Machado. That sounds crazy, but. Could you guys put that? Could you guys put a deal together for Manny Machado? I mean, if you guys thought that this is your year, ah, relief pitching for X Lines Cardinals. That's that's where they're desperately needed. Because I feel like you addressed the home run issue. I thought JD Martinez was going to the Cardinals. You guys addressed the home run, sort of the power drought issue. But now it's the relief pitching. Okay, I see. Well, Arthur, what do you think? Like, you think the Diamondbacks are really serious about that? Is that like just smoke, or is there actual fire to that smoke? Is this just like guys speculating, or, or is this like okay, this this might be serious? I mean, all 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 rivalry aside, I think that would be a great move for the Diamondbacks. Like, if if they feel like okay, this is our year. Right, we're playing hot, you know. We started off the season really hot. Everything's kind of clicking, you know. Like, if they believe that that this is their year, then why not just go big? You think it's smoke? Sounds like everyone's just trying to come up with Machado speculation, right? I think that'd be a great move for the diamond. It went to AJ Pollock coming back. If that dude was healthy, man, that's a scary. That's a scary team. I think Robbie Ray is still out. Well, what are the Diamondbacks see, Arthur? Trading deadline. I feel like everyone, just to stay healthy. Yeah. That's true. 
I mean, yeah, if, if everyone's healthy and then kind of playing up to their capabilities, Matt, uh, the Diamondbacks got the pieces. They just run to that buzzsaw, the Dodgers, in the playoffs. No, but they got a great manager. Him and Dave Roberts are actually close buddies, I think, Arthur. To, to a vo your guys' as a manager. But, um, man, that's a scary team, though. I mean, Goldschmidt is doing Goldschmidt things now. You know, A.J. Pollock, if he's healthy, is a terror. Patrick Corbin, Robbie Ray... You know, even Zach Godley is a decent back of the rotation guy. Zach Granke can still put together a professional start uh, in spite of the money that you guys are paying him. But, but yeah, Nick Ahmed, yeah. There's Michael Mercado out of 499. And there's your autograph, Greg Dykeman. <laughs> not a fan of the not a fan of the uh the Granky X line. He's a he's people want to say he's a weird dude. I don't think he's a weird dude. I think he's just kind of blunt. You know, I don't think he really cares. He's very he has no he has no romanticism for the game, <laughs> really. I know you saw him. You saw him a lot in Kansas City. That's right. Um, he has no romanticism for the game. He'll honestly say, "I'm going to go to this team for the money." You know. <laughs> uh, there's a funny story in LA. There's a lot of funny stories, but there's a funny story in LA where I think uh, I think it was blinking on I'm seeing all these different names. I'm blinking on the catcher that the Dodgers traded to the Phillies. Uh, that was Clayton Kershaw, one of Clayton Kershaw's best friends. Anyhow, uh, it was years before that trade ever happened, but uh, he he was in a slump, or the Dodgers in a slump, and he's like, hey, and he had asked Granky, "Hey, what do you think the, what do you think, the, what do you think the Dodgers need to do, you know, to like, to improve the team? Like, what do you think I need to do? What do you think we need to do?" And Granky said to him in a straight face, uh, "We should probably trade you first. <laughs> and, and kind of started breaking it down, but it was kind of funny. But he's a he's a real uh, baseball, a real baseball geek, a real baseball nerd. A lot of people say that he could. A lot of times in fr different front offices, they've had him in the war room during drafts. They th they think he's going to be a front office guy, um, a front office guy after his career is over. That's how he's pretty. He's a really smart dude. He does have the social anxiety thing, but I think nowadays that's a lot overblown. I think in the Kansas City days, Milwaukee days, that was an issue. He almost retired, I think. You know, so I think that was that was an issue there. But I think he got married. Another Greg Dykeman this time. Look at this bonus TJ. TJ has the A's. You get you get refractor version and base version. But he got married, I think, five or six years ago. 288, 499. And to a nice lady, apparently. And I, th I think that helps her. That, that he She helps him out a lot. And I think that's kind of resolved a lot of issues for him, I think. And he's, he has, like, he has, like, support anytime he's feeling whatever. But I think nowadays, I think it's a, it's a little... I think that's, like, behind him. Which is, which is great. So you can go back to your original opinion on an X line. You don't feel bad. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Arthur's like, there goes TJ taking all the hits. Come on, TJ. You got to share. <laughs> Old Hits McGee over there. Just raking in all the hits, taking all the bonus hits. All right, Aaron Knapp at a 250. 
Arthur, are you in this one? Arthur's like, God forbid I get a hit. Aaron Knapp for the Marlins. Bill Mosher. Or just in general, Arthur. Oh, yeah, you, I'm sorry. Yeah, that ad is terrible. I feel like uh, we, there was a Cars for Kids ad on there. Um, I feel like, wasn't there some sort of scam about, like, some sort something shady about Cars for Kids? A, they have a terrible jingle. Um, but I feel like that there was something that was revealed, or maybe that issue has been resolved, but... There's some, I feel like I read something shady about them. Like not like in a in, in a in a they they like bake children into apple pie and stuff like it's not like that. Um they're not witches in a fairy tale. I think it was like they're dodging taxes or something like that. Or like not not all of the money that they say goes to the kids actually goes to the kids. Like it's a much smaller percentage. In general, folks, you'd be shocked at how how small a percentage you actually need to to give to a uh, charity to run a charitable organization. They're just non profs, right? They just can't profit. So if they're not, you know, think about it. Um, I like that Loren Eric Jennings mentioning the Lorenzo Cain back in Milwaukee. I like that move. That was a good move. Oh, because Exxon was saying earlier that, that trading Granky was a major piece of that Royals winning a World Series a few years back, right? Is that right, Bill? So Bill, Bill's anecdote about cars for kids saying, I gave them my car, got a $500 tax rebate, but they also give you a weekend at a hotel. And you're like, oh, okay. And, but, but then it turned out to be some sort of welfare motel. This is not even, not even a, wow. It's kind of weird. Yeah, I feel like there's there's like something weird that happens with that. They, at least maybe maybe they've resolved that issue, but at one point there was some sort of weird issue that they had run into. Something. I don't know. All right, next box. Good luck, everybody. J.B. Bukowskis for the Astros. That goes to Luke Smith in the Strohs. One thirty out of one fifty for the Astros. That'll go to Luke Smith once again. Brad looking for another uh, Rockies autograph. Who's there's Colton Welker. I think that's the bigger name in the in the checklist. There's I think there's another guy. Is Ryan McMahon in this? No, I don't think so. I gotta look at my Bowman baseball guide on our break menu, bottom tab.
think Carter Kai booms up, right? Zach Granite out of 499 for the Twinkies. That'll be for Daniel Patera. And there's D.L. Hall for the O's. Um, and let's see what we got next. Oh, there's Ryan Vallad, so some color for you, Brad, out of 499. Bill looking for some uh, Tyler Glass now color and, and ink. And what's going on with Tyler Glass now? He's, I think he was supposed to be kind of a top of the rotation sort of dude, you know, and he looked good for a little bit. He looked good for a little bit, and then he kind of melted down. And then they kind of put him in the bullpen to kind of figure things out, but he's not quite doing it there. But he's got a lot of, uh, he's got a bunch of potential though. A live arm. 78 out of 150. Adbert Azale for the Cubs. EA with the number 86 on the Bowman Scouts Top 100. He had a nice debut, too. How about Mitch Keller? 002 out of 150. No ink. But that'll still go to Bill Mosher and the Pirates and the Buckos. Big Boys 007 wants a giant that wasn't traded to the Rays. Doesn't doesn't he look? I don't know. Dave's a Giants fan, so I don't. Uh, he kind of looks weird in a in a Giants uniform. I don't think. I don't know. There's just some guys that just can't just. Cardinals fan X line is like, hey, just throw those Cubs cards away. Who would want those? Nick Williams, Sterling insert. All right. Yeah, Longoria really does look kind of weird in a in a in a Giants uniform. I think Andrew McCutcheon. I think possibly with with you know the Giants and the Pirates kind of sharing like that sort of black color scheme, you know, the yellow and black, orange and black, that kind of stuff. But but I so I think Andrew McCutcheon looks pretty good in a in a Giants uniform, but David Longoria doesn't seem to. I was watching a, a game. On, uh, on MLB Network, here's something funny. Speaking of guys that look weird or comfortable in uniform. The, I was watching the Cubs broadcast the other day. I was watching a Cubs game. I forgot, who are they playing? And the, and the low, and they were, I think it was on MLB Network, and they were using the Cubs announcers. And, um, and, uh, they were using the Cubs announcers for the MLB Network broadcast, and, they were just talking about Ben Zobrist, and Ben Zobrist was up there, and, the, and he was just like, and the Cubs guys were like, ah, you know, you know how some guys just look like they're supposed to be in that uniform, you know, when you think of Ben Zobrist, you just definitely think of Cub, you know, like he just, that's how you think of him, he's been on a lot of other teams, and I was like, in my head, I was like, what are you talking about, he's definitely a Tampa Bay Ray, Ben Zobrist is a Ray, a Tampa Bay Ray in my head. Joe Madden specifically got him because of his relationship with Ben Zobris in Tampa Bay. And I was just like, come on, Cubs announcers. All, all, uh, that was definitely a very Homer sort of, sort of commentary. Shook my head there. So, <laughs> yeah, Ray, right, you are. I, you know what? I, I'm glad Andrew <laughs> Big Boys says I'm glad Andrew McCutcheon cut those dreads. Fresh start, fresh haircut, fresh start.
I, don't know, I, I think that just made it, it makes him look too much like a like a kid. He's like he's like an old guy now. Isn't he? Like... Oh, that was weird. Build Jacoby Ellsbury in a Yankees uniform. Johnny Damon. That looked weird. That looked even weirder. All right. Here we go. I think so we got some orange right here. Strasburg, DL, I think, for Strasburg. And Sandro Fabian. Did he get traded? Big Boys 007, that goes to Dave. That goes to the San Francisco Baseball Giants. Lopo Joe Mojo. 451 out of 499. Is Helio Ramos in this? I think Helio Ramos is supposed to be like the next big thing for the for the Giants. <laughs> Strasburg DL sounds about right. I wonder, it's kind of concerning. Think about another before Otani, the the other big pitcher that you know that who's like super fractor and uh, Bowman card were going bananas on a secondary market was Steven Strasburg. And then he, he ended up with a lot of arm issues. I wonder what his super fractor autograph out of Bowman goes for now. Hopefully Otani doesn't go that that route. Oh, uh, Big Boys 007. Since you're an NL West guy too, I was talking with Arthur, Arthur Peru, and I was like, what, 85 wins could win the division, right, this year? <laughs> he, he said, yeah, 86, 87, around there. That'll win the division. What do you think? Kind of a weak division this year. Paul DeYoung out of 150. Uh, what hype, TJ, for who? Sorry. There's Tyler O'Neill Tun, who's on who's on the Cardinals now. Oh, for Otani? I think the hype is the hype is is the hype real for Otani? I think so. There's a lot of hype around around Strasburg too, though. I don't know. It's always it's it's hard to judge any of these guys before you know. It's always hindsight's always twenty twenty. There's Michael Kopech. You never know what any of these guys are gonna do. You think Otani would be traded in three to four years? I don't think so. He's on a pretty friendly contract, team friendly, club friendly contract. I think they'll just keep him around, unless someone wants to overpay for Otani. But I think the price for Otani would be pretty high. I mean, the contract is so good; it's pretty club friendly because he didn't. He came out early, young, so. So I think the Angels will be just content to just hold on to it, ride out the contract. I don't think he's going anywhere. I do remember the Tanaka hype. There's Quentin Holmes for the Indians at a 125. For the try that goes to Daniel Patera in the last bit right there. We are pretty much halfway through the we are halfway through the break now, folks. So about another 45 minutes to go. It's like a soccer match. 45 and 45. I 
think the Tanaka, if you're using Tanaka as an example for, for Otani being traded in three or four years, I think you're forgetting the fact that, uh, I think you're forgetting the fact that uh, Otani is far younger than those guys. That's the, that's the thing that I think a lot of people forget when they try to compare Otani to Tanaka or Daisuke Matsuzaka or even you Darvish, et cetera, et cetera. Um, he's far younger. So when those guys came out, the height was different because they were already established vets in the Japanese league and they came out, posted for big money and signed big contracts because that's what they're allowed to allowed to do. If you come out as as early or as young as Otani has, you know, that's a different story because um, cuz he for foregone, foregoed for <laughs> He didn't go he he could have he could have stayed in the Japanese league for another 5 years and then post for big cash, sign a big contract and do all that big stuff. He didn't want to do all that. He came out early. So he's, he's a lot younger than when, when those other guys started. So I don't know if the comparison is quite is uh is quite there. And I think you gotta argue that four went. I think I, I think uh, I think the argument though is that I mean if you look at the scouting and the metrics on Dice K versus Otani, I think they're very different. I think Dice K, might, I think uh, Otani is a much better pitcher, much better athlete in general. Tanaka's solid. Tanaka's been solid. Darvish has been okay too. Uh, Joe P, what's the Otani count? Still zero, man. We have not. I've yet to pull an Otani autograph since uh, since the two we pulled ages ago. But in this case, not nothing. I mean, we still have six boxes to go, but nothing. <laughs> yeah, that Ichiro guy too, right, Ray? Bust. All right, next box. Good luck, everybody. And Jose Siri. Siri, what teams does this Jose Siri go to? Doo -doo. To the Reds. Oh yeah, I think I think there's there there's always there's always a foreign player that will always like get hyped up. This happens in in basketball all the time. This will this happens in baseball all the time. And um, yeah, I'm sure there'll be another another hyped player right here. The hype for Otani, of course, is different because he can play two positions. And he can play them pretty well, as long as he can stay healthy. Oh man, yeah, Dante Exum, so that's a good one. I remember when the Lakers, I forget what year that was, who the Lakers drafted instead, but I mix up those years. But I remember when Dante Exum was like, oh, did the Lakers get Dante Exum? Dante Exum, Exum. JD Davis. Brendan McKay, yeah, I think I think there's Rays are serious about using Brendan McKay as a two-way player. Oh, 
Oh, they took Julius Randle. That's right. Um, Ray Rice, I, I'll have to be honest with you. I, I don't really know um, who Kovacek is <laughs> in relation to my Kings. I'm a, is, that, is that a good thing? Yes. Sweet. That's going to turn around the uh, Kings' fortune, right? You know, especially at that left, right, wing, center, defender, goalie position. And it has, I don't know why I top-loaded this, but just out of habit, I suppose. That goes to the Phillies. Ryan Redmond with that one. Um, it builds like it's funny to go through all the first round of Major League Baseball bus. Yeah, baseball takes so long for for these guys to to develop, especially if like you're talking about high school players too. It's a crapshoot, you know. I, I think that's part of what makes like Bowman baseball like collecting this stuff and prospecting and you know prospecting for the, for like future stars is why that's why it makes it so fun. Because you got to try to figure out who's going to be, you know, the guy that, out of all these players that we're breezing through right now, is it going to be MJ Melendez out of 499, refractor for the Royals, for the X line? MJ Melendez, is he the future Salvador Perez? You know, everyone likes all of his metrics. Look at that. He can hit, he's got defense, but. Ray Rice saying, it's funny, NFL, you never see foreign players pop up out of nowhere. Well, because nobody plays American football elsewhere. I don't think, it's, I think that makes sense, right? They don't really play They don't really play anywhere else. Basketball, they're playing basketball all around the world, professionally. And basketball all over the world, baseball all over the world. No American football in, like, the Dominican Republic or Venezuela. You know, so. Rugby players try, well, it's a completely different sport. No, well, that's what makes, that's what makes the NFL so great because it's such a uniquely American sport. You know, that, that's truly, I, I believe, truly a sport that that we can call ours. You know what I mean? I guess baseball, too, but there's so many relations to cricket, I think. But it's a uniquely American sport. And it remains that. I mean, basketball has is an Ameri a uniquely American sport, but that's blown up around the world, which is cool to see, but... That's, I think the NFL is like the one big, big sport that we have yet to export. I think the NFL is trying to export it, but I, I don't know. If, does it work internationally? No, I don't know. Yeah, cricket takes forever, right? There's like tea breaks in cricket. I tried to learn cricket. I just, I couldn't wrap my head around it. It's like, wait, so you throw it, then you hit that thing, you don't hit that thing, and the whole field's a circle, and would you run, do you run back and forth, or do you not run back and forth? So, I don't know. I mean, it kind of looks cool. It's like, it's like, you dress like you're playing golf, so it seems very leisurely, but then they get really intense about it. And it's super competitive. And I don't know, it's a lot. Uh, 
Uh, what's that one? I keep forgetting the sport. We, we 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 discuss this sport every once in a while. It's it has a weird name with a, with 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 a lot of J's and vowels in it, and it's like where where the guys wear like this huge like claw, and you hook like a you hook like a ball in there. And you fling it around, and it hits the walls, and it, and, and everything, and like drug lords in, in in Central America will gamble on it, and stuff like that. Oh yeah, you know, I, I think that. Oh yeah, it's what Bill's saying. Is it uh, Ajale? Ojale? Oju? Yeah. Yeah, apparently it's it's like a like a big thing. Jack Flaherty, nice Jack Flaherty rookie auto for the X line and the Cardinals. There you go, Josh. There you go, that's exactly who the X sign was looking for, nice. I feel like Card Cardinals like this guy, right? We like this guy? He's the future? Front of the rotation guy, maybe? Ooh, this, there's a nice orange coming up, folks. There's a lot of hype around this guy that's coming up. Some non-Otani hype, different kind of hype. I guess similar kind of hype. It's an orange. Vlad Guerrero Jr. 7 out of 25 for the Blue Jays. V Rack Men with that one. Or V Rack Men. Without, I think that's Raz Cal Kid in the chat. Nice. Vlad Guerrero Jr. A lot of hype around him. This 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 will be this will be next year's next year's big hype. He might get a cup of coffee this year. He might even start starting a lot if uh, if the Blue Jays trade Josh Donaldson, which they might do. You know, they'll trade Josh Donaldson. Call up uh, call up Vlad Guerrero Jr. Some people are saying he's better than his dad. And his dad's a Hall of Famer. Is there a father-son Hall of Fame team? I don't think there is, right? Is Ken Griffey Sr. in the Hall? Bobby Bonds in the Hall? Barry Bonds is not in the Hall. I don't know, there must have been some... Are there brothers that are in the Hall? All right, there's Brent McKay to 150. There you go. Stopped by to jump on the train. I've been chasing him to help my... That's that's a nice orange right there. Help the rainbow. This break brought to you by Skittles. Taste the rainbow. Some papers and more orange for the Reds. That's Joey Votto on a 225. You guys see Joey Votto flip down the fake shades and, and then flip them back up the other day? Last week, maybe? Reds, that goes to EA.
All right, four boxes to go. We're getting there, folks. Good luck, everybody. All right, so on a Saturday the 9th, pretty much a lot of games ending soon and a lot of games in the books on a Saturday night. The old the old Redbirds, the Cardinals beat the Reds 6-4 for like their umpteenth uh, umpteenth win in a row over the Reds. Tampa Bay Rays beating the Mariners 7-3. Padres 5-4 over the Marlins. Kansas City shutting out the A's at Oakland, 2-0. Red Sox beating the White Sox in the Battle of the Sox in Boston, 4-2. Cubs shutting out the Pirates at home. Angels winning 2-1 on the road against the Minnesota Twins. A walk-off win for the Toronto Blue. A walk-off walk, I think it was. Blue Jays winning 4-3 against the Baltimore Orioles in the bottom of the 10th. Brew Crew, I think, scoring their, scoring over 10 runs for the second night in a row. 12-3 over the Phillies. Phillies slumping a little bit. The Nationals beat the Giants 7-5. Yankees beat the Mets in the Subway Series in Queens 4-3. The Snakes pounding out 12 runs against the Rockies in Colorado, 12 to seven. That's the final there. Astros edging out the Texas Rangers. Almost said the Texans. Astros edging out the Texas Rangers, four to three in Dallas. And in extras, Detroit Tigers beating the Indians, beating the Tribe, four to two. Bottom of the 12th in Detroit. Walk off win. Is that Goose Mojo still going on there? What's their record since the Goose? And my Dodgers currently down to their last three outs. They're down 5-3 against the Braves. I have to admit... I have to admit that, uh, that I picked the Braves over my Dodgers today. So that pick might hold. It's just too good of a matchup. Braves like hitting lefties. And Alex Wood was on the mound. He's a lefty. And the Braves lost the night before. So kind of kind of went with the zigzag theory as well. There is just some value there. It was a good value pick. Oh, the best autograph in the hobby. Wake up. Wake up, everybody. Here's the best autograph in the hobby. Andres Jimenez. Ah, oh, Jeremy 33 with the Mets. This is one to treasure forever. I mean, forget about Otani. Forget about it. Aaron Judge last year. Forget it. You know? Forget it. Who, who, who wants to chase stupid Otani autographs when you can get Andres Jimenez? Reese Hoskins? Forget about it. Vlad Guerrero Jr., Bo Bichette? We don't need those guys. Screw them. Brandon McKay, Hunter Green? Francisco Mejia, don't want his autographs. Ryan McMahon, for the, don't need it. Don't want it. Best auto in the hobby. You just saw right there. Andres Jimenez. That's what, Victor Robles autograph? Nope. Don't need him. Don't want him. Acuna? Forget it. Albius? Ozzy up. Forget it. Don't need it. Don't want it. I can't wait to pull I can't wait to pull the Andres Jimenez Super Fractor. Oh, that 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 will be a joy to pull in my that'll be when people ask, Joe, this is a frequently asked question, Joe, what is the best hit you've ever pulled, man? What is the best hit you've ever pulled? And I'll be like, Andres Jimenez Super Fractor Auto. Oh, that's numbered. I thought that looked different. Bowman birthdays. Happy birthday, Michael Fulmer. Out of 150. I don't know when your birthday is. 
But that's an at atomic refractor of that one. In March. Okay, so it's already already passed. Happy belated birthday, Michael Fulmer, Detroit Tigers, Brett with the Tigres. Abandel Isabel at a 125 for the Dodgers. Jeremy Merle with my boys in blue. I don't know. Well, you know what, Eric Jennings? That's a good question. Yeah, Bill, that's what I always say too. At least that autograph's consistent. Um, Davey's like, my signature is almost that good. I want to, now I want to know. Eric Jennings bring up a really good question. Does he sign the same at the ballpark for the fans? That'll be interesting. Someone, where is he now? <laughs> Double A, triple A? Someone needs to go there and be like, yo. There's Daniel Johnson, 75. That's for John Goss. Uh, I'd be like, someone has to go there and get his autograph. Go to a AAA. We got we got Jaspi people all over the world. Remember, we broadcast from coast to coast and all around the world. So there's got to be there's got to be someone who is near the city where Andres Jimenez plays minor league ball. They got to go to a game. I'll pay for the baseball. I'll, I'll pay for the minor league baseball ticket too if you want to do it. And go there and then just and get his autograph because if he signs differently then then he's got some splaining to do. You know what I mean? Um I have I have not been around enough pro athletes, Bill Mosher, whose autographs were bad for bad enough for me to complain to them about it. TJ, yeah, TJ interacts with more ball players every day. He's with the Tulsa Drillers. TJ, ha have you called out anybody for a bad autograph? You're like, come on. <laughs> There's Anthony Rizzo out of 499. The most favorite guy most favorite guy in Pittsburgh. They love him in Pittsburgh. Will Smith in West Philadelphia, he was born and raised on the playground, is where he spent most of his days. That's what it says on the back right here. Chilling out, maxing, relaxing, all cool while shooting some b-ball outside of the school. When a couple of guys are up to no good, started making trouble in his neighborhood. That's what it says right there on the back of the card. He got in one little fight. His mom got scared. He's moving with your auntie and uncle in Bel Air. So, I'll lead off base hit for Yasiel Puig. I don't like rooting against my Dodgers, but that value. Um, CPAP stud. Not sure what that means, but it's a family show. You, th you think AJ Puck will be back strong? You know, I'm not a doctor, but I definitely liked AJ. He was supposed to be up this year, I think, if he didn't get that Tommy John. But he's, a, he's supposed to be, like, he's a big, tall dude, uh, big lefty. I think a lot of people compared him a little bit to Randy Johnson. You know, so he was supposed to be up at some point this season, I think. I hope he comes back strong because I think that'll be, that's the kind of character. It's a little bit harder for pitchers, I think, right, to, to, to get really, to get a lot of traction in the hobby. You know, you don't see them every day. You know, so, so um, you know, you don't see him every day. They're not hitting home runs, you know. But I feel like AJ Puck may have the characteristic to be some guy that kind of blows up in the hobby a little bit. Especially if he's, like, striking out a ton of guys. You know, so I think that would be pretty cool. You know who's striking out a ton of guys, ladies and gentlemen? Josh Hader. Has everyone been following Josh Hader?
it's a final in LA. Atlanta 5-3. Folks, I've won five of my six today. I had a bad day the other day. That makes up for all that. One bad day, two good nights in a row. Five of six on my picks. I'll still do my picks over the weekend, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to bookmark that. If you want to bookmark the break menu. Oh, now, Bill, now you're making me feel bad for making fun of Andres Jimenez. Bill's like, my dad did payroll for his platoon in the Marines. The guys in the, you know, backwoods of Alabama and West Virginia. Didn't know how to sign the name, so they would just make their mark. Put an X. He said it was the saddest. So, so now, are you suggesting to me that Andres Jimenez may have a literacy, literacy issue and I'm making fun of that? Now I feel bad. At first, I thought it was just a lack of just caring. <laughs> he's getting like a he's get he has like a stack of a thousand cards that he has to autograph, and he's like, "F it." <laughs> just gonna squiggle there, but all right, third to last box. We're getting there, folks. We're getting there. I'm on time. This was this isn't any later or, or faster than I usually do this break. We're 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 spot on here. Is that finest sold out, boys and girls? What's her? oh Harrison Bader? Eighty out of one. What a break for the X line. You got Captain Jack Flaherty. You got Harrison Bader. Eighty out of one fifty. Rookie Auto Blue. Do we like the Harrison Bader? X Line said he we like the we like the Jack Flaherty. Are we are we a fan of the Harrison Bader? I think he's been I think he's been slumping like the last week or so, but I think overall he's had a decent season. There's AJ Puck, we were just talking about him. Part of that A's talent pipeline. Oscar De La Cruz to one uh, to two fifty. It's purple, it's two fifty. Ian Anderson to 125. That's one of their high round draft picks. Third overall in 2016. So we'll see another. So we got they got Sean Newcomb. You know, in Atlanta. They got some other guys down there. Other good pitchers down there. And they're gonna have Ian Anderson come up at some point too. That Braves team is gonna be scary in a little bit. Uh, Bill is asking if there's any Yankees fans in here. What are they gonna do with Sonny Gray? I don't think they're gonna. I don't think they're gonna. Tra what can they? What could they do with Sonny Gray? I guess that's the question. They already traded for him. They moved. They moved some guys. Moved a lot of guys to get him. Are they gonna just move him a year later? Uh, I I have no idea how much the Cardinals cost in this. I, I feel like they're a fifty dollar team. Maybe, Luis Robert. Out of 499, he's a big name for the uh, White Sox. That goes to Robert Rohr. Chris Archer to 250. Everyone, everyone's saying, "Oh, the Dodgers should uh, Dodgers should uh, trade for Chris Archer and stuff." But Chris Archer's on an extremely club-friendly contract. I think he's getting paid under 10 million dollars for like the next. Five years. A lot of pitchers, a lot worse than him. Finest is not sold out yet? Folks, we got to fill up that Finest. you got to force me to do it because otherwise I may start thinking, oh, maybe I'll just turn things turn things off early, you know, because i got to print out a lot of labels. i got a lot of work to do after this. My night is not over after I go off air, folks. That might get me thinking, oh, maybe I'll just sign off early. Maybe we'll just do it next week. You know? This is a long break. Maybe Joe gets a little tired. Maybe we don't have a reliever in the pen. There's nobody warming up, folks. No, nobody in the bullpen. It's just me. I'm going nine innings. 
Going nine innings on three days rest. That's what it is. Nine innings on three days rest. That's what it feels like right now. We, we, we blew out the bullpen the night before. And they're like, and, and the manager is like, Joe, we, we got to have eight or nine from you tonight. You know, we don't got anybody in the bullpen left. That's what it's going to be tonight. You got to give us nine. We're counting on you. We're, we're all counting on you. What was that thing, an airplane? Just want to say good luck. And we're all counting on you. Yeah, the pressure is on you guys. I mean, really, like most nights, I don't really do the hard sell. You know, that's not my, not really my thing. But I do kind of go go hard sell uh, on Saturday nights because I'm just like, well, you're not gonna see me for two nights. So like, really think about it. Like, you want to wait for two nights for finest, or you just want to just do it tonight? All right, good luck, folks. Second to last box. We're getting there. We're getting there. Then we got a couple one box breaks. Of, uh, of hockey and then hopefully by then we'll have finest and then after that when we start uh, when we're done with finest we'll we'll call it a night I mean we'll pretty much be at the end of the usual time of the broadcast anyway all right Ah, Andrew K steps up to the plate, knocks it out of the park, picks up the Red Sox and finest. All right, folks, our evening is now spoken for officially. All right. All right, X Line. Good to see you. See you on Tuesday, man. Have a good weekend. Sorry, the finest is already sold out. Let me take out that text there. Drop the schedule in the chat. All right, so we are done. Anything else that fills up after finest will be pushed to next week. I will not miss last call, Bill. Even though it's even though it's early in California, last call is at 1:30. Believe it or not, I was I was shocked when I was in at the National in Chicago, and uh, I was at the National in Chicago, and and I was just like, all right, well we gotta hurry up because you know bars close at two, right? They're like, Joe, what are you talking about? I was like, what? Well, they, 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 this is open till four. Four. What are we doing until four? I'll be like, well, when's the last call? They're like, three. Three? That's crazy talk. Um, and I, I, was, I was in New York for a buddy's wedding in Brooklyn a little while ago. I was like, what? When's everything open till? That's crazy. I was like, well, wh when, do you, when, do you guys, when do you guys go out? The or this the, the going the, the weekend going out schedule is in New York is completely different from what I experienced in Los Angeles. Let's say let's say it's a standard Saturday night. Nothing special, just standard Saturday night. You know, like say you do dinner, drinks, club or something like that with your buddies. So like in, in LA, you gotta knock out the dinner, you gotta start at like five or six. Knock it out at eight. By eight, you know, you get, get get to the get to the bar or the the pub or the or the club or whatever. You got to get there around like 10, 10, 30, 11. And then for you got eleven, twelve, one. You got about three hours there. But then everyone in New York, they're just like, oh yeah, we don't finish dinner until like nine o'clock, ten o'clock, you know. And then we mosey on over to the other place. No, we're there, there until four in the morning. It's like what? That's crazy times. When do you? When does everyone sleep? When do you get time to when do you get time to open up the, the, the Sunday paper and do crosswords? Do the Sunday crossword, because the Sunday ones are the hardest. As everybody knows, obviously. Is the hardest. So when do you get time to do that? Busy sleeping away the day. 
Can't wait for the Sunday crossword tomorrow, folks. There's Mackenzie Mills. Almost blew by him. Mackenzie Mills for the Phillies. That goes to Ryan Redmond. Who's looking forward to the crossword, the Sunday crossword tomorrow? Who's a crossword hound like I am? I know, I know all of you guys are. There's a lot of a lot of crossover between the hobby and crosswords. In Argentina dinners, well, when I was in uh, dinners until ten in Argentina, says uh, says Bill. There's Lazaro Armenteros out of 4.99 refractor for Tej for TJ. When I was in Spain, they have they have long dinners in Spain too. Yeah, that's kind of weird, right? Not I feel like not a lot of color in this case. I, I see that. Usually we see a little more orange. I feel like we see a lot of orange. But that Tyler Glass on is going. Not the exact one you were looking for, Bill. Uh, no, not New York Times. New York. Do you think I go with all the bougie New York Times? L.A. Times. Go L.A. Times. New York Times. None of that East Coast nonsense. I'm all about the West Coast bias, not the East Coast bias. 22 out of 25, Luis Robert. Very nice one for the White Sox, Robert Rohr. He's one of their big up-and-comers. His autograph does very well. Secondary market as well. Hey, Rex is here. That's right. Joe for Jasmine's Hobbyland. Coast to coast and all around the world, Rex. That's how we do it. Coast to coast, all around the world. I could do his autograph right now. I can't believe, sorry, I got to rant a little bit. I was just like thinking about it. I was like, I can't believe how many breaks of this have we done? Bowman baseball between the jumbo and the, and the hobby cases. We did, we did like a few random hobby cases. We did four like Bowman uh, pick your team hobby cases, a lot of jumbo, like two Otani autographs. Come on. Where are you? Where are you? <laughs> I, I have half a mind. To just go down to go down to Anaheim right now, and just go to wherever Otani lives, and be like, "Hey, like you gotta sign some of these base cards for these guys." <laughs> I don't know if the value would be the same, but but I'd be like, "Come on, do two Otani autographs out of all these boxes that we've done. We've not seen. Maybe he's in there. I'll keep my mouth shut if he's in there, but." But for now, we're down to our last autograph, and I've only seen two of his autos in all these breaks that we've done. That's like a that's like a Monday Night Football. Come on, man! Like that would be that would be my come on, man. You know, if they're like Joe, what's what's gonna if the producers of the show are like Joe, what's your come on, man for tonight? I'd be like, I'd be like, two Otani autographs in all the boxes of Bowman that we've opened up. Come on, man. Come on, man. That's what I, that's what I would say. Watch, he's in here, and I'll be like, oh, okay, there he is, happy now. No, Bill says no, Joe. My arm's falling off. Just, just one. Actually, no. I would get, I would get one, 
for every case that we've done and give it to the angels person. Except for the guy that got the two in one case. Sorry, you already got yours. Remember the days when, uh, yeah, Otani Red and coming. Remember the days when, uh, when you could mail a baseball card to a player and you, they'll sign it, they'll send it back. I know. Watch. Uh, actually, TJ did say that this case didn't have, has not had a lot of color. I concur. What if a Otani Red is a, is approaching? The last Red I pulled out of this set was uh was this guy actually. Hunter Green for the Reds. And actually, the person who got it, that was EA Sports in the game, he got it graded, came back a pristine 10. Pristine 10. So, proof that Joe Jaspi handles your cards in a pristine sort of way. The guy who got the Otani's, yes, did get them in a spot random. I think they were jumbo cases, too. It was pretty shocking. They were they were just base autos. I don't think they were... They were uh, I don't think they were... Whatchamacallit? Numbered. But I think he only bought a few spots in each of those... In that spot randomizer, so... Rex says the only player that I ever sent anything to was Cal Ripken Jr. when he was 13 back in 1990. And said he got a return letter with stickers that said, Hi, I'm not signing at the moment. That was ty ty a typed out sticker, huh? All right, last box, pick your team four. We made it. Looks like we made it after all. All right, good luck, everybody. Here we go. Otani, Otani, Otani. Nope, Spencer Howard. That that doesn't spell Ota Shohei Otani. That goes to the Phillies though, Ryan Redmond. I don't think I called your number for the Phillies. So there you are, Spencer Howard autograph. All right, now the now for the Otani red. Sorry, J.B. Bukowskis. That's not a that's not a red Otani. That's D.L. Hall to four ninety nine. That'll be for EA and the O's. Am I mixing up all my paper and chrome piles? I think so, whatever. It'll get sorted out, literally and figuratively. Do, I, do, they, do they still use aluminum bats in college? I thought they switched to wood or like a composite. Just notice that sound. Definitely slowing down, ladies and gentlemen. But we are almost there. And there's Cornelius Randolph. Five out of 50. That's gold for Ryan Redmond. 
Remember, uh, remember, remember the uh, the Minister of Magic, Cornelius Fudge. I remember that guy. All right, there's Ozzy Alvius. There's Corbin Burns out of 150. Nick Prado, Tristan McKenzie, hashtag Bowman trending for the tribe. And that is that, ladies and gentlemen. We did it. Thanks very much, everybody. Joe for jazbeeshobbyland.com. Keep checking back for more baseball, basketball, football, all sorts of things. We'll see you next time for the next break. Bye-bye.